Welcome everyone to another episode of the Wood from the Trees podcast. I really appreciate every single one of you. And if you want to support the podcast and you like what we're doing, if you could support us on Patreon, we'd really appreciate it. And not only that, but you'll get loads of extra content. You get to join the party, you get to dictate what way it goes, and you could win some prizes. So enjoy the show and I fucking love you. So join us on patreon.com forward slash the wood from the trees. And for the price of a small little cheap coffee or a pint, you get all that shit. So don't hesitate. Get to it. Get to it. We are on. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your first podcast? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. First of many. I don't know now. I, some fella, I told you that before. Some fella got on. You're going to have to go... Closer. Right close. Right close. Oh, for fuck's sake. That better? It sounds the same to me. Does it? Yeah. We're just back. See. Now talk. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, there's a dis... Yeah, yeah. See, there is a there's a bit of a difference. We should, we should have the old... <sighs> I don't know. I think people would feel a bit uncomfortable. Should we have them in the middle, you see? What you? Well, we know because they're a thousand euros and I'm a subcontractor, but when the lads, we're the only idiots in there at night, so the lads leave theirs charging, so we can take their ones, then you phone on one side and walkie-talkie and the other, whichever, one ear picks up the phone calls and the other ear picks up the two-way, everyone's, everyone's on the radio in the middle. It's a wonder, as a subcontractor, they don't make you buy him. Yeah, I know, yeah, but sure, I suppose there's a lot of things they should make us <laughs> do. <laughs> How long are you working in the mill? I'm not there that long. I used to have... I'd be in and out of mills with another crowd, DPOD Engineering, and that's his thing, like. He's a neighbour. He's actually De Deirdre's neighbour. Um, and when I went out on my own, he got on to me very quickly, looking to see if I'd fall in for a few things, and I did. And then, sure, I suppose when you're kind of around the industry, then people start to pick up on it, and they, they rang one day. But he, he's already got a fella in there. So how many places are you working in? Like on call or are you just in the mill every week? Oh, I'm in the mill. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm here for a few months, sir. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, well, I'm out now for the month because I told them I have too much on. So, um... Do you do your own stuff as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Like that, like that it's just another contract. And it's just you? Yeah, but the other fellow then is belonging to DPOD. I oh, know, they have one of their own on in there as well, like. Yeah. Yeah. Derry, he's on nights, permanent. Is his name Derry? Yeah. Is he on to, what's his name? That famous lad, father, what's his name? Who? Oh, I can't, Tyg, Tyg. Uh, oh, Tyg, uh, you'd know him no dear. What's his second name? Tyg fucking, Fleming. Fleming, yeah. Derry Fleming. Derry, oh, he'd fucking flip if he heard that now. Would he? You sure he'd be going, we've, here's this thing, he doesn't believe, he doesn't believe that anyone follows me or anything like that. He doesn't see the 26,000. No, no, no. He doesn't believe in that shit. And then when we'd be going, that's why he won't wear the walkie-talkies or anything. And whatever, whatever's, whatever he can do, he'd go against you. Really? Yeah. So then we'd be talking in the walk. Timmy would be standing in front of me and I might need a spanner off him. So I'd pick up the walkie-talkie and I'd read it on Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be going, man, we just... I think everyone has a friend like that. Yeah. Or someone that just disagrees with everything that you say, no matter what. Uh, he's, he's, not, he's not that bad now. He'd get cross now if he heard that now, but he, he's, uh, he can be controversial at times. All right, uh, what age are you? What age am I, Deirdre? 32. 32. You had to ask... Your lady friend. Why that sure that? changes every fucking year. It does change every year, <laughs> but it kind of has a sequence. <laughs> no, I, I, I do. I get times, day, it's all these things. It's, it's, it's actually difficult for me. Where are you from? Skull. Born and reared. Uh, tricky one. Born in Germany. Funny enough. That is funny enough. That is funny enough, isn't it? My mother is German. My old fellow used to work in Germany, and that's where he met her. Um, he used to work for Nike. Quit. Yeah, I swear to God. Doing what? They weren't worth the fuck then. Doing what? Um, management. I think it was more in the advertising. Marketing. Marketing is the word. Yeah. And he went to Germany working. Yeah, I think when he went out of college, I don't know huge. Uh, I don't ask. Is too your many. father from Skull? He's from Skull. Though. Well, Keith's from Skull with generations and generations. Uh, my great 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 grandfather came down there as part of the. Irish Guard or whatever when, when, when I don't know was that because independence was declared or I can't remember what it was but he was the first policeman to, yeah yeah um, and uh, sure they owned or he married in they owned they married into someone and ended up with the the courtyard which is 
still there today, but not in our position. But it was the bakery, the drapery, the shop. You know, it was it mm. was the everything, the pub, and so that just went down through the generations. And my grandfather sold that. What, was it like oh. little square it buildings actually, around? It kind of was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to see it from the main street because it's it's the courtyard goes in off the street under under a little archway. So it would have been kind of, but the town would have been shaped very differently then to what it is now. But um, it was it was kind of everything at the time. But sure, I'd say before I was born, they saw that. No, I'd say it was hard enough to keep it going. And your father went out to Germany. How many years was he there? I have no idea. Honestly, I'd say I went out straight after college or whatever. I think it was in UCC. And then I'd say he went out there doing his marketing thing. He, I, I know that he wasn't with Nike straight away. He went off with some, um, I know, banking crowd or something like that. I don't really know. And ended up with Nike because I suppose they were an American brand trying to branch into Europe. Um, so it probably wasn't that hard to get a job with him if you could speak English. And you could speak German. And could he speak German or did he ah, learn yeah. it there? Well, he learned it out there. But he used to do, I'd say, from what I can gather, because because of the bakery at home, in the summers, he went out there doing work experience, and in but ended up working in a, I know he was in a bakery by night there for a long time. And he learned, learned his German through a lot of that, I'd say. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose. I don't know, there are a lot of Do you coo- speak any German? I can understand it, but I don't speak it. Did you ever go on holidays there? First time I was there in a long time was at Agri Technica last year. Yeah. Your mother didn't have you out there all the time? Not really, sure. She's no family there now or anything. Her parents moved over when we were kids here to Ireland. As well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd say she there was no one left there belonged to them, I'd say. And when you were in school, did everyone, did you have a German twang? No, fucking no. Sure, I was only, as in born there, but I was brought home. I was... She was at home on holidays when I was born. I came out six or eight weeks premature and then just sat in an incubator there cooking for a while and then they flew, <laughs> they flew me home. So I think they actually got a private, uh, because we had, had good health insurance or whatever at the time. I think they flew me home in a private plane cool. in the incubator. I don't rightly know now, but... You were always set for big things. Sure I was, you know, jets. mother always said that, yeah. <laughs> How many's in your family? Just myself and my sister. So she's adopted then, so... So and they brought her from America and they kind of dropped me in Germany for a while and then brought me home as well. How did they end up going to America? Uh, that was to do with the Nike thing, I'd say. I don't know. I don't ask many questions. Well, it's a podcast. It's I have con- to ask questions. No, what I'm saying is <laughs> I've no concept of timelines and things with these things. It's yeah. very confusing for me. Um, because the next thing we were living in Athlone, so I'd say we were in Athlone until I was two or tr- two. So what, there's just a lot of traveling with work? Oh, I'd say so, yeah, 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 yeah. Less questions, less 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 hassle. Yeah. I've been to where we were living in Athlone, all right, because when we were younger, we went up to Shannon for a spin on the old... Boats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, when we stopped in Athlone, Dad took us up to where we used to live, all right, yeah. It was all boarded up now anyway, so... Really? Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. you remember it? Small bit. I know, i give you a nice story now. Well, and I have memory, but I suppose because there's pictures somewhere, would have been pictures somewhere, but this fucking awful looking sitting room which I suppose was the best of the best at the time but you know that black and white tiles and that kind yeah. of thing And yeah. but there was a fireplace and I don't know was it my, my sister now was a lot more troublesome than I was up until about two or three years old so much of an age difference in two years she's only eight months older than me okay. and she was always bigger than me when we were younger and because I was a because I was so premature it took a while for me to develop. So when I was small, but then I started to get... Yeah, you caught up well. Yeah, yeah. The, but the nurse said that to my mother, no. She said, if he'll survive at all, he'll be big. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and being German and all that, this was in the German hospital. Like, you know, he might, he'd probably die. But if he doesn't, you know, they'd be very... <laughs> you know, no, you know, say, ah, sure, he'd be fine. No, 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 no. He'd probably die. But if, he, if he'd grow at all, he'd get big. <laughs> but um, she, there's a big store. Oh, they bought this... Fucking, they bought a rug, a right expensive thing now, apparently. And uh, Persian. Something, anyway, that was worth a fortune. And so she took off my nappy and we were playing with the shit inside the nappy yes, and just kind of massaging it. it into the thing. So that's that's the only story that I have from that house. But somehow <laughs> she got into the fireplace and got the ashes out of it. As well. Oh, fuck. 
So that was good. But she got to blame anyway. Ah, uh, you couldn't watch Chaps. <laughs> you couldn't watch Chaps. <laughs> so yeah, I'm after having the morning and I'm just after getting out of the house. And I'm, the, I'm happy now. <laughs> so yeah, this is going to be the most relaxing part yeah. of my day. So this, I'm buzzing here. <laughs> it's not just because I'm talking to you. It's just nice, relaxing, adult conversation. I've had some weird conversations today. Um, did you go to school? Did you like school? No, I had a very difficult time in school. Yeah. Um, not that I was abused by teachers or anything like that. Um, sure, I was... Not very, into, I, there's a whole thing, people don't understand it. I had a whole thing where I couldn't understand stuff like other people can understand stuff. And, you know, teachers, the teachers we had, I tell you, they weren't very good at, they were probably good at teaching in terms of they were intelligent or something like that, but they weren't good at teaching, teaching. Do you know what I mean? But you're like a man, like a man says to me, and he is, he's a lot of kids. He's in the same trade as me. He's been very good to me. He's a gas character. And uh, he is, he is one of his sons is, is very autistic. And he, like he says to me, he said, come here, boy. He said, if there was a fucking spectrum when we were young, we'd mm. be all rolling around on top of it. Mm. Do you know, things are different now and there's different ways they of... Can, they catch it in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I wasn't, I'm not on the spectrum, whatever, but I, I'm, I'm very dyslexic and have to come around things differently to other people to figure stuff out. I find it very hard to, to read and write for a start, which is fairly basic. But I also used to find it hard to understand how socially, do you know, how to interact with other people. I did have problems with that. And sure I was, I was bullied, but then it was gas. My sister used to be the cool one when we were younger. And then things, I don't know, the dynamics kind of changed a small bit or she went her own way or whatever, but... Things I didn't have the best childhood now, but I, I it's not. To, was it all school based around school based? Generally, generally, yeah. It was and different. just the, the not focusing in school or not being able to focus. Yeah, has there, to there's home. there's hours, weeks, months of just blank, and people don't understand that. And so I could be getting in trouble for something, and it's hard. I've tried to explain it to my old fella now a few times. I could be getting in trouble for something, and I'd have no idea whatsoever what it was for. Like none, absolutely no idea what I'd actually done wrong. And then I'd zone out, which would make it even worse. And the teacher's there going, sure, you're not even listening to me. And I'm looking at him going, sure, no, I don't know what the fuck is going on. But sure, I wouldn't say anything. I'd just stay quiet. And then I'd snap eventually. And sure, then I was a troublesome child. I'd say I was the only child ever to get um, suspended from my primary school. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't remember what the fuck was going on. Well, there was a teacher and I'd say she had it out for me and sure she'd say I was a bollocks and sure I was supposed we're both right. Yeah. But so I, she, I got in trouble anyway and I was outside and the principal was called up, Mr. Gallagher, and he, he's actually a fine, honest, nice man, to be fair to him. He was the principal when my dad was in school. So that, you know, in, in my opinion, yeah, actually it shows there's something, there's something wrong when that's happening in one yeah. sense. But he wasn't, he wasn't that old to me or whatever. He was tall and scary though. And it was the typical thing because I was a child. I was supposed to stand quietly while they discussed what I had done wrong. And no one was fucking listening to me. So, uh, and and I can't, I can't remember. I just snapped anyway. I said, roaring, shouting, and sure, that was it then. Gone. Gone, yeah. And was sure I was back in a week and it didn't make any fucking difference. And when you left primary school, well, secondary school must have been worse, was it? Sure, I was bigger and bolder by the time, you know, that was getting. So, and it, it, it sure it wasn't, I just had no ability to concentrate at that stage then and was completely fucking hyper. Um, what were you into? What were your hobbies? What did you like? Sure, that's the thing. Sure, I suppose there was nothing set in stone because I didn't come from, sure, what I wanted to do when I was small. I wanted to be farming, driving diggers, playing around, but no one in my family, there was, no. So, no, there was other people that used to look out for me when I was younger and and, and, and there's one lad and he used to, the poor bastard, he used to he used to let me come with him everywhere in the digger, like, do you know? And he really did, in fairness. He, he it's sure, like, do you know, there's, it's fine when you're, a young lad and he comes in for a few hours. I used to follow him everywhere. Like I used to make my mother bring me around after. And I think a lot of young lads do that. Well, when you have a passion for something like that and you have a chance, you're going to fucking be there all yeah. the time. <laughs> Garrett, my brother Garrett, very same. 
the story you're telling me, they, it's nearly the exact same. <laughs> but they couldn't keep him in school after 13. No, yeah, see, I'd, 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 I had, because of, I suppose, uh, my father, and there's a whole another dynamic. There's a lot, of, I mean, you could make a fucking four-part episode here now and we could go very deep, but we'll keep it light for now. But because of my family's history in Skull, should I think they thought they were, they think they're some, you know, the O'Keefe's of Skull, which that doesn't mean anything to anyone, only them. But should I think they're up on the pedestal then and should you have to act a certain way or you have to be a certain way? Then you like felt, or no, they felt you were letting them down. Oh yeah, that I, I always was and still am the black sheep of the family. But sure, like, it's the same with everything. When the shit hits the fan, I'm the first one to get the phone call when it comes to anything. If then they need me then, there's no bother. Yeah. Do you know? And I, I, I've, my auntie now, um, well, I have two aunties, but uh, Susan in particular, she, she's, she was D4 up in Dublin, you know, her husband. So my uncle Paul, he's high court judge, you know, we're talking about the real deal here and everything was so prim and proper. But sure, even she does be laughing there watching me effing and blinding. On the, does she watch it? She does, apparently, yeah. I only found that out recently now. And would your uncle, the barrister, ring you and give you some legal advice? <laughs> no, I'd say now him and, like, yeah, he's actually gas or whatever, but when he's around, when he's down in Skull, you wouldn't even know that that's his thing, you know? And, and sure, I suppose we don't really... I mean, he has a way of talking now to... You know, hello and how are you would be enough because... Does he live down a long lane? No. He lives up a longish lane. Because I just started coming to me. We worked in a forestry somewhere and we were down some lane and there was a judge lived down there and we used I, to talk to him. But should it be all, that, sure, like you're in the right spot there for all of them for their second homes. Yeah, and there's loads homes, of holiday yeah. homes down there. Yeah, that's, it's another thing that, like, it doesn't hugely affect me because, and we live in Lep, which is a way out, way out now, well, like, you know, 40 minutes back in, which is handier for us and we have a fine spot. But there's a lot of people, like, if I wanted to build or buy a house at home in Colorado Road and Skull, I wouldn't be able to afford it at all because the value of the property is so high. Because of holiday homes. Because of that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think in Westport, that was going on for years and property became so expensive that now you can't get planned permission unless you're actually from the area and you live there. Yeah, yeah, so they have that. But if you have enough money, you can do whatever the fuck you want. That is true. <laughs> is, what are you doing with all yours? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just keep throwing mine away. It's not good to us. So when you were in secondary school, what did you ease I, into it? Did Jesus just... Christ, I can't remember. Sure, there was so much bollocksing going on. But sure, there was a, you know, I wasn't the only one. But I suppose I had no filter and I still don't. That's the difference. Well, I do. I try, I do. I try and tone it back when I have. To, but you know sometimes if someone's a fucking idiot you tell them they're a fucking idiot I don't care if you're a teacher or a principal or you know they'll tell me I'm a fucking idiot when they want so why can't I say it back to them anyway I'd say I made it second year and I was kicked out um, had you any form of like were you like I'm into mechanics like metal work had you done metal work and go I like this do you know what's funny now because <laughs> there's a lot of lads now find this very funny when I meet him that I was in school with I was probably bottom of the bottom of the class when it came to engineering. I'm sure that's what they do now. And the rest of them then that I'd be copying from, they'd be ringing me, looking at me to fix things for them. Which is an interesting change, isn't it? But I, I don't think it's that interesting. I think nowadays, nowadays people and a lot of career guidance teachers and a lot of people now can see where kids excel and where they don't. And people learn differently. Some people learn by just taking stuff in putting it in there and they can grab it whenever they want. You know, they just yeah. read it, yeah. take it in and it's there. And that's great for certain things. But if you have to manipulate, fix, figure shit out, that's a different type of learn. It's a yeah. different type of brain. Yeah. So the thing I'd say about that then, well, this isn't a different. So then I, I was out of, kicked out of school, school and off to the tech then in Skibreen. Which which it no longer exists because they've merged uh, two schools in Skibreen into this one fucking massive one. Yeah, and I don't know how that's going, but I say it's shit enough for some people. And it's probably brilliant for others, like anything else. Mm -hmm. But when we were in the tech, the first thing about it was the principal at the time, Seamus Coakley. He was a particularly special individual. He had the ability to. He didn't, he didn't care who you were or where you came from. He only cared about what you were doing here and now. Do you know that kind of way? Mm. And, and, and it, sure, he'd, he'd, be, he'd be fucking locked up now if, he, if, if the carry-on was the same. If you came in and you needed a hug, he'd give you a fucking hug. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And, and if you were being a bollocks, he'd tell you you were being a bollocks. But he, he, he never... 
I found the teachers used to kind of pick on you a bit if you were, but you're the same way you were picking on. It's tit for tat, mm. but because they're in the position of authority, you're in the wrong. But like I said, if you're being a bollocks to me, I'd be a bollocks to you kind of thing, you know? Anyway, Seamus had a had a very good way of, of he was calm, he was collective. There was never really a problem. He, You could sit down in his office, you could just talk to him, you could tell him everything if you wanted, you know what I mean? And, and you know, sure, it sounds bad now, but if you were doing the bollocks inside in class, the teacher or the print or whoever may say, should go out for a fucking fag. Go out and have a fag and come back in after you've had a smoke. Hmm. Because... Did you smoke back then? Oh, yeah. yeah. What, type, what age were you smoking at? Ah, uh, fuck it, I don't know. Well, this was, yeah, yeah, third year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, I know what age I was, but... You sure, we were smoke? All, we were all smoking fags down the bushes. You still smoke? I do, yeah. Didn't yeah. go on the vape, yeah? No, no, I tried that a few times, but it's... Not suiting you? No. Yeah. You smoke many a day? Oh, I'd smoke about 40 fags a day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not good, no. Yeah. It's an expensive game. <laughs> it is, yeah, 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 yeah. But sure, I don't drink then to make up for it. So then you may, you may start smoking a cigar. Yeah. A happy I, medium or a pipe. My old lad used to smoke a pipe and I loved it. I tried the pipe. I bought a pipe. They're lovely. I love the smell of it. I couldn't fucking work it. Why? I don't know. It just never really was right. They keep going out. Yeah. That's normal. Cunt of a thing. Yeah, but they're cool. <laughs> I, I, sometimes, I've, I've, I was walking down the street the other day and I seen a, I smelt it before I seen it. Yeah. Some guy smoking a pipe and it just brought me... Well, the time uh, I the time I bought one there, I think I got it on Amazon or something, but it was because I was doing a job for an older fella and he was puffing away in the pipe and it did, it smelt unreal. Not- and he said it to me, he said that he used to smoke a, like, I think it was on the majors he was and sure there was no how many did you smoke a day it was just one fag after yeah. the other after the other and he said he went on the pipe and he he never went back to fags and he'd puff away at it and, and there's not as many carcinogenics so you're getting to yeah. tobacco and you're rubbing it yourself and it's put true. a bit of weed in it if you want whatever you're into <laughs> <laughs> it depends what you're into <clears throat> so when you left school what did you do? Well, I, I, this is the funny one that people find it hard to understand. So I, I managed to stay all the way through to the leaving cert and then failed on maths alone and then went and repeated the leaving cert in the school, in the tech. Did you? I did, yeah. Now, did you, why, did you want to do something that you needed? Yeah, I was going for automotive engineering um, purely because like everyone else, well, not like everyone else, that's an unfair statement, but like many at the age of 17, 18. Not, well, and not a fucking clue what they want to do. Yeah. Not a clue. In truth. Hmm. In truth. Do you know? Um, now it seemed like the lads kind of college course, do you know what I mean? And the chance to go on this and that. Sure, if I had any sense, just probably something like marine engineering or something I would have done. And sure, I probably would have dropped out from that too. So I'm not sure that it really matters. Um, sure, I wasn't six months in college and I kind of, I will say I didn't love it because it was just like going to school again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's be up in the morning. You were there, oh, fuck, yeah, fuck this again. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I used to have a good bit of crack in the practical classes and things. Because, sure, I suppose there was a few things I, I knew more than, than than other lads in the class. But then, don't get me wrong, there was others there to knew a lot more than I did. But, you know, rebuilding engines and stuff like that. And it wasn't that I knew more about the how to rebuild an engine. It was that I could do it without the proper tools that they were trying to make us use. You know, and there was funny little knacks. And Brian Nixon there was Were the, you finding different ways of doing it or handy ways of doing it? Well, you handier just... ways. And sure, we used to be pricking around with cars and every kind of a thing when we were younger. And sure, we didn't have the tools. We didn't have any fucking money for any of this stuff. Sure, the money was wasted on the car in the first place that we spent too much on. That now we were fucking ripping apart and trying to keep going, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, I was I was a bit of a bollocks with money. Sure, I'd know. I'm your brother. <laughs> <laughs> you can't bring it with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But so I did that. I did the full year in college, but I used to, because part of the course was the welding as well. And sure, I used to always be saying, sure, if I got an apprenticeship, I'd drop out as a welder, I'd drop out or whatever. And sure, then I ended up below in Castle on Bear, on Bear Island. And that summer I got a call to go down. Would I, they were stuck for a lad, like, and you could be doing a bit of power washing or this or that or the other. And sure, the first day I went in there, I went off with the head welder and I stayed with him then. I stayed with him for I don't know how many years. Oh, you just you you started liking it or like yeah him? yeah yeah yeah. Was uh, it him he, or uh, the, no? The, the he game? sure he didn't the word English. I like was the this is what we were doing. I liked sure he was Polish. No, he was fine. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, sure. I'd, I'd still Jesus Christ. I'd go back under him any day, any day. But um, it, it 
all the lads there were Polish at the time. But then you must have learned by just go do it. Go do it, yeah. yeah. And then you'd be either told that's shy or it's not shy. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. And because the lang language barrier, now I started to learn, we had our own little language between ourselves. And I started to learn what he actually means as time would go on. So like things like, you know, he'd be telling you more quickly up, right? And you think go up quicker. But what he actually meant was as you're going up, move quicker across. Do you know, and things that a mm. normal man in a course could explain to you and yeah. you just had to fucking figure it out. And what are you learning? Every kind of welding. Like Every, TIG welding, CO2, the whole lot. Everything, everything. But most of what we did there was with the rod. Big, like you're talking about transformers the size of small containers with leads running out of them down across the dock. One big earth lead welded onto the bottom of the ship and you drag your... your and, and that's the thing, you'd have to go back... It's hard to explain, but if you were in the boat, you'd have to come up out of the boat across the gangway around and over back to the container. If you were down in the dock, you had to come up out of the dock around the slip and then into the container. So there was no fine tuning your amps like. And did you have to do long hours? Yeah. So when I started, it was, well, so to travel from Skull to Castle Bear in the first place is about an hour, an hour and a half. You do it in an hour, no bother in the morning, clipping along with no, mm. no cars or anything on the road. So you used to be there for quarter to eight to go across and he'd collect me with what what then when more lads started to come from mainland was the work ferry which was just his own boat at the start and he'd bring me across and then we'd be there to start work at eight and we'd work on I think it was half seven originally we used to work there every evening so, so it was a long day yeah but it was fine but you, you know? didn't mind that at all no no you were like thinking this is fucking better in school yeah I yeah. am happier here yeah yeah no it was grand sure. did you look after you money wise yeah to be fair no um, 10 euros an hour was a big lot of money at that time 10 euros an hour that? Jesus Christ yeah, for a look for a young lad learned that was decent money yeah, yeah. because it, as the apprenticeship went on that there was no oh you're on apprentice wages now I see that some fellas that start fellas in the summer look I'll give you a tenner an hour but then when they come to do their apprenticeship they put them back down to yeah. apprentice first year apprentice wages mm. but like you know, if you want them to do a bit of work for you, you're going to have to. Now, I know it's hard. There's a whole fucking debate, argument there. and it Depends if he's a good lad or not. If he's but working. that's the truth yeah. of it. That's yeah. the truth of it. But, you know, he's going to fuck things up mm. and it's going to cost you money and you're there trying to teach him. Do you know what I mean? There's mm. a whole balance. But then you have other crowds. It depends what you're doing as well, what service you're providing. There's other crowds where it doesn't matter what the young fellas are doing as so long as they're on site at eight, you're charging for them and you're mm. charging a fairly good rate yeah. for them. So, you know, they just, you know there's... They're getting Day, that's a whole other problem that's been caused at these day rates and yes, it's just a man yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah 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 so it's and it can be hard it can be hard for young fellas there and I see them whinging and moaning and oh giving out to apprentices and you know and paying them fuck all but sure if you want to do a day's fucking work come on we'll do a day's work if you don't then fuck off yeah well, there's not that it's, it's really bad out there now yeah yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of... We're, we're all just creating little monsters. You yeah, know? yeah, that's the thing. But you're, they're, they're, look at the fucking, look at the world that you're bringing them up in. And mm, I, I'm tough. not, I don't have kids, so I'm not in a position to say that parents nowadays are fucking shite, but it's the whole circumstance around parenting. First of all, I'm not saying go home, beat your children. But there comes a point where <laughs> there comes a point where they have to have some fear of authority. Uh, they have to. Yeah. yeah we, we actually, me and Greg were talking about this coming home from uh, Ballymena the other day. Like Greg was just saying, like chaps have to be afraid of their parents. Yeah. They just have to be. I'm not saying you've been to show you, have to be to show you <laughs> but you have to have them afraid. Yeah. It's true though. My always say the the worst mistake my old fella made. Now bear in mind, my parents were separated now for a lot of my life and. There was a there's a whole deep thing going on there as well between the two of them and, and that. But um the worst thing he ever did was he never beat the shit out of me. While he had a chance. Sure, he tried then when I was big and old. <laughs> <laughs> then it was too late. <laughs> it didn't work. <clears throat> yeah. Well so I I don't think look, I've never had to beat me chaps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's very easy for me to say that Clark's only a, a, a child. And but the dynamic between the children are all so different. Yes. Like I have four kids and what works with one will not work yes. with the other. Yeah. You know, if I told Clark he can't go to training for a week, he'd be devastated. Like yeah. he'd, he'd do anything for yeah. you. <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. this, it, I think if they have it too easy and they get everything, it'll destroy him. It will in the long run. I yeah. mean, yeah, 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 it will. How long did you stay in that job? Oh, Jesus, I was there. 
I was actually only there. I get confused with my timelines because there was so much going on. So I was only there just over two years. Maybe into three, maybe you're into your three. I'd say only only two years, and I never, and I never, and I, and see uh, how many months of that. And was oh, that was, an appre- was that an apprenticeship? It was an apprenticeship, as in it was a fabrication. Mm. There's no, there is no, because what? Okay, so I, I was f- the welder there or whatever. But first of all, there's no apprenticeship for a welder. You're a fabricator, which yeah. also gives you absolutely no qualification to weld. That's codes. Then that's a different thing. And then you've CE standards now as well, which is a whole other lot of shite. But anyway, the is that stuff all lot of shite? It is. It is. It's. It is. But there's. 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 Like obviously, it's great to have standards in every industry. Fair enough. But the CE standards are just fucking. They're. They're designed to make it so that the small fella like me can compete with the manufacturer that's already set up. And and I'm not. I, I'm not saying that someone stood up one day and said we're going to screw all the small fellas. But that's how they've developed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and were they like, I feel that those kind of certifications were just made up for welders and lads working in factories to get products yeah. certified. Yes, yeah. You yeah. know, for, for safety standards for... Yeah, so, well, I mean, we'll go, the, the basics of it is, we'll say if I went making buckets, a yeah. bucket, and every bucket nowadays has to have a CE mark. Every product, every product mm. that can be sold has to have a CE mark. So the, the, the way it would work was for the bucket to be manufactured, I, there's procedures. So they want to proof that there's a procedure for every stage of the job, whether it be the welding, the cutting, the every kind of thing like that. But in order to adhere to those procedures, so now I can't use my old Lincoln welder if I wanted to be. I have to use an inverter welder. It has to be brand new or you know tested and certified, all that kind of shite. So then you move on to all, basically all of your equipment is now redundant. Second of all, you're... So like if you do a CE mark, it's actually what you can do is I can pull, I could pull Deirdre in off the street and I could certify her to do this particular part of the job. So I can pull someone in with no qualification that hasn't slaved away for four or five years learning their trade. Just to do one. Just to do the one thing and that's certified now. But I come along with how many years experience and I do that and they tell me it's legal for you to sell that now. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. So, so there is a, no, no, like everything, there's two sides to every story and there is a right and there is a wrong to it. And the, like I said, standards in every industry is, is no harm. Should there was, I, I was just gas like, if you think, see how far Ireland has developed in the last 20 years. I remember when we were driving from Skull to Skibrina, you used to nearly take an hour and you used to go over this little bridge and all these things that don't exist anymore yeah. in a car with four ball tires, no seat belts, and, yeah. and, 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 and whoever was driving was most definitely drunk and there was no bother. So things have changed and obviously the rest of the, you know, you can't have a better Ireland and then still be doing, you know, so things have to develop. And no, things- uh, yeah, I know, I get you. Things do have to change and things get safer and things yes. get certified for things that need to be certified. But I think what happens though with every society, you can get so choked up in red tape that nothing yeah. can get done. There. That's exactly the truth. And and the construction industry is a great example of that. Now, now again, I don't have a, a huge amount to do with the construction industry, yeah. but you see local building, what goes on here and the lads get a house up and they have their scaffolding up now and they, you know, they stick to it and they're wearing their high vis, they're wearing their hard hats and that's when they get the job done. Mm-hmm. You go up into Dublin and you f- three or 400 men on a site that'll get it done in that day. All that many men would get done in that same day less than what the four lads on a site down here will get done. Yeah. And then you wonder how inflation and cost spiral and all these things go out of control. Yeah. But sure, I, I was doing a job for a crowd there and they made me do at least 12 hours of um, uh, onboarding and inductions and this and that before I ever got to the site. The amount of paperwork we to, the amount of paperwork we to forge, come up with, right. sure, where am I going to get this cert now, today, Sunday, and I have to be up there on Monday? And that's what happens. And the point, the point I'm making about that, and and then get to get up to the fucking place. And they have so much barriers, pedestrian walkways, this, that, and the other. You'd nearly kill yourself just trying to get through the door because it's all too much. It's but someone someone wrote on a piece of paper that you have to have this. Have you heard about the buddy system? Oh, the buddy system. Have you not heard about that? No, is that a thing now? When in- there's a like in Intel and all those places up in. Dublin, yeah, yeah. they have a thing called a buddy system. So you have to have someone with you, whether it's to open a plug or whether it's yeah, to yeah. take a screw out. Unless you have a buddy with you, you can't do it. I know three lads personally that have had literally a week off where they're up there working and they can't do anything can't that do week nothing. because their buddy's not there. <laughs> you see, that's I used to see it because I, I gave a spell in England doing a bit of work. And I used to see it 
kind of working in harmony over there now. No, no, pro- well, I know Brexit, fuck that, but no, they're all broke, don't forget. Yeah, even town councils across the UK are, are, are gone bankrupt. So, um, we're not too far from it here. <laughs> no, we're not, we're not doing too well. And if we're so busy wasting money on health and safety, no, no, that's the wrong thing to say. People are going to pick up on that wrong. No, say I, wasting no, I think, money on they health know what I mean. It's just, it's gone a little bit too far. Yeah. You know? Someone has to actually do the fucking work. See, this is what I'd be saying to the lads now at work, you know, inside in, in the workshop. And you'd be, and, and I could be accused of it. You'd be looking at a job and you'd be kind of turning it every which way and, and come and trying to come around it and figuring it out. And you just shut the fuck up and do the fucking job. It'll be done before you even think about it yeah. and move on. But it is the same with this. How are we going to do this safely now? Well, don't do anything fucking stupid in the story. Do you know what? The, there's a whole thing. We had a whole chat to one of the lads. This went on for a long time and it was basically... And this could come off wrong. There's a lot of really, really, really dumb people in the pot, in the there's a lot of stupid people around, right? I, I I think it's lack of common sense. Yeah, exactly. But do you not think if we'd no health and safety at all, and the really stupid people were being killed off, being doing stupid <laughs> stuff at work, then they, do you know? Do you not think that there's some sort of a genetic uh, yeah, pool? Yeah, tin in the chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, that's the whole thing. But but the point is, they make everything so. Um, safe for people who, who just don't know what they're doing. I, g- I give you an example there, for the ships and things we'd be on now and there's a lot there's a good bit of paperwork follows that but generally they have it down to a T because they need the job done tides come and go they wait for no man jobs have to be done so they have everything ready to go they know what has to so all I do I'll only sign a hot works permit I will not fill What's one that? out What's a hot works permit? Well, uh, you, couldn't you need a hot works permit no matter where you are when you're doing hot works? Oh, like welding. Well, the cutting, the yeah, yeah. And I mean, to be fair, there's something to be said for the permit, except it doesn't stop anything from going on fire. It doesn't stop anything from blowing up and it doesn't stop anyone from dying. It's a piece of paper. That's, yeah. but it, I suppose it's making sure that you're checking. And for insurance and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but at the end of the day, when, when, when something does go wrong, that piece of paper isn't going to save a life. See, there's a lot of, um, it's just, it's just too many jobs for people. Yeah. Like, but it, that, that's, that's the thing I was going to get to when I was in England. Everyone had a fucking role purely because of health and safety. Mm-hmm. And it meant that everyone could only do w- what they wanted to do. And anything you didn't want to do, all you had to say was, it's not safe, mate. Hmm. If there was a shitty job there and you didn't want to do it, oh, no, it's not safe, mate. See, when you have people that are, and it's not just people dying, like nobody wants anyone dying. No. Like, it's the, the death thing isn't the problem. It's people suing for half not. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's the lad that comes in and does something stupid and breaks his finger. Yeah. And then sues the crowd for 25,000, yeah, yeah. 35,000. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of fucking cunts out there. There's a lot of that goes and on, right? then big companies and the guys in the office are there, right? We're, we fucking have We're to not letting this happen again. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It yeah. Just, and, it, and it's that red tape thing. That's why I think Ireland and England and in the Western world, we're never, ever going to compete with China. No. With India. No. When they can just... The price of life is so cheap out That's there. the thing, you see. They don't yeah, give a shit. Yeah. That's the whole other side of it that we don't want. Yeah, it's true though. It is, it's true, it's true. Yeah. But I, I like like that, I mean, there has to be a happy medium somewhere. Happy and, medium. Well, did you know where there's a happy medium? Out in the countryside, where we all get along fine. We do what we have to do. and I or, or like private crowds that just know their business. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm known for being pretty fucking reckless. I've never lost. <laughs> I've never lost a finger. All of them are here. I know. I see fellas working in these crowds, the best of the best, and they will be walking around with two fingers left. Right now, some people like us. Hey, just fucking stupid. tap wood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. tap it. <laughs> you could lose a finger but, in the morning. But you know what I mean. I have all my toes. Um, I've never. I've never broken. I've never. I've never been injured at work, apart from. Do you know? As in, like, I've never broken. I've never been hospitalized from work. I get steel in my eye regularly. I can. Get that out of my own most of the time. I look after myself, you know. Well, I've seen a friend of mine got stealing his eye and he's he's had his lifetime. It just takes the wrong. And in, in our job, say, with forestry, you know, timber and your sawing yeah, yeah. timber, shit happens. Yeah. You know, but yeah, you, you constantly have, you have to use your common sense yeah. all the time. Yeah. But what we're finding is like, and I think you're going to find it too, and anyone that's in the industry you're in, it's actually getting someone that wants to do the job. Yeah. Because they, yeah. they think they want to do the job, but then when they realize that, oh, Jesus, there's an awful lot of shit. There. <laughs> this is actually, there's no end to this. This is constant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, it's yeah. day in, day out. Yeah. And I don't think that people really see that side of it. No. 
No. Like what, what, when you when you left that place that you were doing the well and in you Bear Island, yeah. So did uh, you get another job straight after that, or when did you want to go out on your own? I was, yeah, no, but see, I was going through a tricky time then. I was still drinking that time. Were you bad in the beer? I I got bad there for a while, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could almost say I became psychotic. I don't know what the fuck was. And what what brought you to that? A whole lot of stuff, I suppose. I was only starting to deal with stuff from my childhood. Um, As you get older, we'll say with parents, with 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 drink and things like that, and the house and the home and stuff like that. Drink at home. There was a good bit of drink at home. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was. Yeah, and um, and then a slightly absent father then. And a mother sitting at home drinking. Do you know that kind of way? And there was nothing bad ever fucking happened to me. Nothing really bad, but it was all kind of in your mental. Head. And you start to realize, but it's only when you get up really older and you realize it's not normal. Yeah, this is why that happened to me. And this is why I could never figure this out, is because that was going, do you know what I mean? So I, I had a bit of that that I had to kind of come around. And sure, then I just didn't know where I was, what I was doing, didn't know where I wanted to be. The work was fucking hard. I'm not going to pretend it wasn't. The work was hard um, there was there was just a lot going on and then I wasn't sure was I good enough to keep doing what I was doing do you know what I mean and then I'm sure we'd pulled out of FOSS after the first phase because it was such a load of shite sitting above there with fellas that were sweet you know I was I, I could I could do the welding I could do all the stuff now there was far more for me to learn don't get me wrong and most importantly I have to say this there's stuff I learned there on the theory side of things that really fucking changed the way I was able to do stuff. Definitely, definitely. But it was a hard old slog inside in Foss again. It was up in Waterford. Um, do you know, same thing again. Didn't Staying out on your own? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, luckily after a couple of weeks, the plumber apprentices came in and one lad from home was up there with me and we were staying together too. And in fairness, he did a good job of screwing, keeping me bandaged up. Had you good up. friends back then? Ah, fuck it. Yeah, yeah. Sure, we were all, there was a good gang, but I see, because then when but I went they have kept you going though. Well, when I went off down to, 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 to Bear Island, I became completely separated. Isolated. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And then I was living on the island for a while and I was living down in Castle Bear where I didn't know people, do you know what I mean? Or I knew people, but you don't, it's not It's not the same, you know, you're off kind of on your own and sure like that, I started to, to, to I don't know, I just went a bit mad for a while. But sure, it was all good crack too when, when you think about it. But What made you think, this isn't good crack and I need to check myself? Well, what happened was... Um, Oh, geez, I have very little memory of it. But somehow I went on a rampage anyway after two days on the beer and managed to get a good gang of foreign lads to hammer the shit out of me. <laughs> what do yeah. you call a rampage now? I was just drinking and... I don't know, I, I Talking pack- when you should have been listening. Y- kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. I'd be good at that now. Yeah. You know? I'm not too bad at that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, I, th- I can't even remember. I think uh, in my head at the time, they had you know, started something and, and I went, uh, but I think I actually just stood, they were driving along, I'd say, a gang of them, down the street, like, and I just stood out in front of the car. I, I That was the first time I'd ever really had a, kind of drank myself to a blackout kind of thing, you know, no fucking memory. And of course, everyone's story is a little bit different. Mm. But anyway, that was the crack then. So then I made it to work the Monday, fairly, in a fairly, fairly bad condition now. That evening, Went back on land up to the house and then the boss showed up with my old fella and the two of them said, you're coming with us now. Like an intervention? Yeah, yeah. Off the Tabor Lodge then, which is a rehab. Go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for a drink. Or, well, it's for everything, in fairness. That fair, was, play, fair play to your boss. He was very good and I was paid. And he said it to you before? Uh, he often fucked the head off me. To be fair, he often treated me almost like I was a son. Now, there's another dynamic to that. His son has two kids with my sister. But that was all kind of happening at the same at time. the same time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, in fairness to him, and and being an islander, and a good islander is is only a traveller that got stuck on an island. They yeah. they have the same kind of wits about smarts, ways of coming. You know, um, how did you react when they came to you? Jeez, I didn't want to go at all because I didn't really want to face what I was. Facing, I didn't. Did you deb- believe him? Did you think I'm only having a laugh? Yeah, sure. I used to kind of caught it with that. So we're all just on the beer and having the crack or whatever. But sure, I suppose you 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 have to figure it out. Very, you know, the what co- are them places like grand, grand, grand. The place I was in was grand. The problem with them kind of places is, so I didn't. Turns out have a problem. I have no bother not drinking now. 
I'm not dependent on alcohol, but I had fucking problems that I needed to deal with. And alcohol was a good way of, of you know, I don't know, hiding it or whatever, you know. But Is that what they, te- they show you over there? No, no, not necessarily. You have to do a lot of figuring out yourself. But the problem with them kind of places, and it's very difficult, and it's the same with dealing with psychiatrists or shrinks or anything like that. You have to be fierce careful with them. Because one... They're not always as qualified as you think they should be. Well, and in, in respect that you think they're going to fix your problems. Yeah, and- exactly. You have to fix your own fucking problems. And if they, I noticed that because in the younger, sure, I was in and out of court as well a lot for a few years. I, for, for, you know, drinking and fighting and bollocksing and doing, you know, all that kind of carry on. And... Um, and drink driving and every kind of a fucking thing. But so you had everyone around you thinking you were a cunt. Oh, really, shit. you were trying to, sh- you were just suffering. Yeah, but that's what happens. You know, that that's the, you know, and especially when you come from a, a wealthy family. Oh, sure, he's only, you know, you know, I never had a fucking penny. Do you know Did what I mean? just cut you off? No, no, it's not that. But you see, like, you even think, oh, they never had money. They didn't have, they pretended like they have money. Yeah, yeah. They, they had, fuck all my grandparents now or probably have a grand, but should they now, do you know, it's hard to see or explain, but it's kind of, you know, like, I suppose we never were, were hungry or anything like that. Didn't mm. like that or anything, but it's not, we weren't the... The, it's like it's every day what you what behind closed doors is you, you just don't fucking know like you just see this big facade from the outside and it's never what it seems with anyone I see that more and more now as I go through life with other people and different things and was it people's perception of ye like um make you treat you like cunt like they were thinking this lad's a spoiled cunt at times yeah 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 at times and at times I was a spoiled cunt too so the, you know you have to yeah, again it goes back to what what I was just saying there. The only person that can fix me is me. No one else can. People can help you along the way and they can try. And then that's the problem is if they try, I used to see that, all right. They try and, and, then, and then you let them down. And then they try again and you let them down. There's only so many fucking times you can do that before someone will just walk away from you. Do you know what I mean? So, so how did you take the first step to fix you? I don't, you know, I don't have an exact, because like I said, we with counsellors and and all these things, a lot of counselling, I actually counselling started very early on when I was in trouble in school to try and get uh, anger management. Anger management was the thing because there'd be nothing, nothing, nothing in an explosion. And to be honest, at the time, and like everything else with these things, at the time, it doesn't necessarily benefit you. But if they'll give you the tools that you learn to use later in life, then you're, you know, at least you gain something out of it. But I used to always notice this about the good ones and the bad ones. The good ones will just let you talk and they'll agree or disagree, but they will not say a fucking word because otherwise they're leading you. And I used to let them lead me. Mm. I used to let them lead me and tell me what they wanted to hear so that I could go away, be done with taking taking the class. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So that went on for a long time. But when it came to things like Tabor Lodge, which is a very difficult, in fairness to the different counsellors and all the different, the doctors even, it's a difficult, difficult thing because as you know, every single person is different and every single problem is different. There is not one cure for anything. Mm. And one problem I did notice with it is <clears throat> most of the people who really had problems that I was there with, they're dead now. They committed suicide. Because you put yourself in a position where you go in there and you try and it's all good and then you hit the real world and you you go, go so well and so hard for a while and you know this is your, it's usually your last chance now. Like the wife is going, the kids, you won't see them again if you fuck it up. And then you start to find it hard and then a little bit harder. Because pressure. It's, that's what happens. And you get a, you come against the wall where you're like, I can't keep going without going drinking or taking drugs. I can't go without it. So then you'd say, my life isn't worth it now. And that's when the, the danger comes of you doing something. To Did do. you ever feel like that? No, again, I didn't really have that. I, 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 and I didn't have that dependence on alcohol or drugs or anything like that. You know what I mean? I, I was just, I don't know what the fuck I was. I suppose I was just a lonely, scared little boy in a big man's body. That's what happens, you know? Mm. So, and I mean, now it's different for me because I I just, I really couldn't give a shit anymore. Do you know, like I don't, 
I don't care. You know, that's, that's, I mean, I do my own thing. Work probably does, again, so substitute drink for work. That's probably true in some cases. Do you know what I mean? Do you love your work? I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you need that bit of hunger too. You need to need to work, in my opinion. I, that's not a fact now. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, you need to have some bit of drive. And then and you need to, you know, you, you, there's, there's a lot of money on the line too for people like me. I, I can barely cover my wages. You see, you see Big Shed, you see all these things. Mm. That's where the fucking money is. It's not in my pocket. Yeah. And most of the time, it, it's it's already owed to someone else before it even comes in the door. So do you know what I mean? You need to stay at it and, and hope that it'll get better. But I mean, if you didn't love, if you don't love it, just stop. I think people don't tell people what it's like when you start a business. Oh, it's fucking you know, horrible. You, everyone thinks because you have this and you have that, yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks like you're making loads of money when really I'm fucking struggling oh, here. So Rob and Peter to pay Paul to keep going so you have something at the end yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of times where I said, Jesus, if I wasn't in so much debt, if I could buy myself out of this debt now, I'd walk away from it. But you wouldn't be happy then. Oh, Where'd I feel go? like that all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. just have to stay going. You do. But I think the hustle keeps people going as well. It does, yeah, sure. I mean, look at the... So there's some, I do a lot of work for a lot of really, really, really wealthy people. Now you have the two, I deal with all kinds. This is, this is the only fascinating part about me. So I could be dealing, I could be cause, cause of the family or who they are and, and bear in mind, they're not you know, better than me or anything like that. But because of skull as a place, don't forget, I could be hanging around with a high court judge tomorrow and I could be hanging around with, you know, that, uh, doing deals with a traveller the next day. Do you know mm. what I mean? It doesn't really, but I do my bit of boating. I do a bit of sailing and things like that. And next thing you're on the same boat uh, with, you know, some fairly, you know, yeah. up there. But then... You've that kind of people who've done well for themselves, but then you've other people and I'd be, I won't say too much now, but I'd be working in, in places and, and the people who own that place, they're there alongside you. Mm. And they also own 200 homes in a mm. estate somewhere and they also own three or four wind farms. Or What do you find the most common denominator from the people you see that are successful? What, what have they all got in common? Sure, I suppose it's this kind of, well, hmm, if you really look into it, I, I have never really looked into it, but obviously it's the drive. You would say it's the drive to achieve mm. something. Do you know, I started off with, with, with very little. Um, you know, you, you have people there who, who would look at me and say, I'm sure he got handed everything. How? how where? Mm. When? I didn't get handed anything. We bought our own fucking house. In a completely different town. I got a bit of help from an uncle. I say that much. He gave me a few pounds, you know, for the deposit. As in, he gave me a little bit of the deposit. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. he saw that I was coming out of the fucking trouble that I was in and I was trying to do something. So, yeah, everyone gets a little bit of help. But the first fellow who will say he was handed everything is the farmer down the road who was handed a couple of million euros worth of fucking farm and land. I know it might be misery and, and all of this and that and the other, but you you have a couple of million in assets. Don't you be fucking talking to me about... The, 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 yeah. the saying is, uh, you know, crying about money, but the Mona Lisa is hanging yeah. over the fireplace. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. from farmers' point of views, you know, if you're handed a legacy and it's a family legacy and you, you, you find it as, as a precious thing that you don't want to get rid of, but because of... Ireland selling yeah. themselves out to Europe. They're caught in a loop. It's like with people in business now. You're caught in this loop of finance. Yes, yeah, you know, yeah. Because you have to have new machines and if you want to get this contract, you have yeah. to have that. So yeah. everyone's just caught and you have all this stuff, like whether it be a machine or whether it be land and people that say, but sure, look, you fucking chose to have that. And you're like, I need it. It's the only thing I know yeah, how to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, it's all, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like true. everyone's caught in their own little... Yeah. Their own little loop. Yeah. And even, and I'd, I'd go as far as to say the people who you could, like, will say, oh God, I've no proper example now, but the people who then are handed a business, like a flourishing business. Mm. Well, I'll give you a good example now, although no one actually would say it, would dare say it. There's a quarry down at home. They own two quarries now. And the youngest son took over or kind of thing. When we were... When we were fucking this high, he was running around that quarry. And he, he used to work there day, noon, night, and things like that. But he was handed a running business, you'd say. It was, all he had to do was be there and take it over. And there was no more for him. You know, all he used to do was be there. 
that's what you would think. But if you actually know, so that quarry was actually in, in more debt than, than you and I could ever believe while he took, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Things you don't, like you that. Don't know, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and even there, there's a fella and he's, he's, no, he's, he's way older than me. His kids are only a bit younger than me, but his father built a shop, you know, the shop in the town or whatever. And, and then, the son took it over and you're saying, Ash, that bollocks and he did fine easy. It's only very recently I found out that when he took it over, the shop was practically broke as yeah. well. And I, I think there's another side of that. If you have this huge business and you're growing up in it, but you don't love it and you don't want to do it and you have a per- as a, a young person that wants to make your own way, yeah. are being forced to do it. Yeah, that that's a different, yeah, too. yeah, yeah. That's that's no good. That's no, everyone good. has their own little little path. I fucking don't know what the answer is, but I do know if, if we don't find it, we're all fucked yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When did you decide to go out on your own? Oh, yeah. So that was the thing. When I left, oh, Jesus. Sure, like just so many mitigating factors, we'll say. So I was actually banned off the road at this stage when I left Fair Island as well. Uh, still driving, all right, but banned off the road. Mm. And um, so then I kind of went out my own because I'd left, what had happened actually is is a, g- a good friend of mine, his father, who had previously attended Tabor Lodge, same place as well, he actually um, done away with himself because he was finding the struggle a bit much. And it was the weekend of his funeral. I went back home to school and, and sure, sure, we were on the beard in that weekend or whatever. Now, to be fair, I probably didn't even bother drinking that weekend, no, myself. But I can't really remember. I just remember it being a sad fucking thing. And then... Monday came, I was just sitting at home. Tuesday came and eventually Jared, the boss rang and he says- Home in your home place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, are you fucking coming back or what? And I just, I remember being quite silent for a good, probably only a minute, but a minute waiting for someone to speak on yeah. the phone. And I just said, I'm sorry, I just can't like. And he said, how do you mean? He'd be a fairly fiery bastard now too. And I always loved him for it in fairness. He, now the same man would, if, if I, you know, we used to fight with each other, like as in, Fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was all because he was, it was the best way he knew to make a fucking man out of me. Do you know what I mean? And not, not in a, not in a, in a, in a, in any kind of a bad way. Do you know what I mean? He, I suppose he had the tools to put me back in line. Do you know what I mean? And, and he was good. And I wanted to, ple- I wanted to, to show him I could do it as well. Do you know what I mean? So he was a good old mentor too that way. But, but when it when it came to other people didn't couldn't wouldn't thrive on that sort of thing, yeah. you know. So he had his problems there with that too. But um anyway, so he said he was like, What the fuck do you mean? Like you're not coming back. I said, I don't know. I said, I don't know what I want to do. I, I don't know where I am in my life at the moment, like and this and that. And when I said that then, and bear in mind this man, you don't know is he gonna what he and that was one thing about him. The minute he knew, he would just know, and he just said, Right. He knew it wasn't an off the cuff thing. You were actually thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. He said, that's fine. Ring me, ring me when you need me. Off the phone. No more about it. And other cons there, oh, we're kind of stuck now this Mm. week. And you know, that was it. He knew he could get no more out of me until I figured myself out. And I suppose I wasn't being particularly, although to be fair, I was always, I was kind of had that thing. I was, you know, while I was at work, I was at work. Whatever was happening, Mm. you know, Outside of work was outside of work, but when I'm at work, I'm at work. It's the same way there a lot of the time. I won't look at the phone, I won't answer the phone. What I'm what I'm actually stuck in, a, 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 when I start a job, I want to try and finish it, you know what I mean, kind of thing. So I was able to do that fairly well, but there were times where I'd coming in hungover and thing, and he'd be looking at you going, Jesus fucking Christ, I'm, like, you know, I'm fucking paying you to sit there like that, you know what I mean? So there were times, but I wasn't the worst, hmm. that's for sure. You got the job done. Yeah, yeah, as best I could. No, just more worried about you than that mess. He was, in fairness, he was, he was. So I, I was off, left in, and I didn't know what I was going to do, and I kind of went out in my own kind of thing, and so. Did I, you have gear? Did you have well? I had a bit. Of, I had a small bit of gear, yeah, and I had uh, friends that owned the farm as well, and they let me use one of their sheds. You see, they were mm-hmm. very good to me. They were very good to me. Um, and still would be to this day. So what did you just, uh, do you need that welded or just? Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't really know my head from my ass, being honest with you, you know, um, coming from a shipyard to, to, to trying to, you know, make a gate for a farmer is, there is actually a big difference. Like you wouldn't think it, but there is a big difference in trying to figure out and you, you don't know what you're supposed to charge. You don't know what, what's what, and you don't know how to order stuff. Simple thing. Like you don't know how to plan a job, nothing. Um, first six months you're riding yourself up a stick with every job you do pretty much well what I ended up doing was because I was 
spend off the road. So my mother, in fairness to her, she used to drop me to the farm in the morning and then I'd stay there for the day and basically see what happened. And so there was always stuff to do on the farm anyway. <laughs> but, you know, mm. That's not very productive business-wise. <laughs> so um, what I ended up doing was buying up, um, um, you know, slurry tankers and things like that that were fucked and fixing them up and then sending them off and done deal. And actually, when I look back at it, I made more money off that than I do now. <laughs> But it was a horrible old, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the dream. Like I, I said, so the dream was, and you were doing what you had to do. Yeah, 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 to make a few pounds. But you know what you, what you want, what you visualize in your head was you see David Cuddy off in the distance there and mm. fire street being taken down. Next thing, big breakdown, fucking, the whole machine is split in half. Oh, who are they going to call? Fucking Liam O'Keefe's going to come and well that. Yeah. And then you grow up and, and, and you, you end up. Having to actually do that and you realise, oh, this is shit. <laughs> you were only been called when they shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Um, but you know, I know things are good now. Things are getting better. I Because mean, I, I went out on my own and then fucked off to England. That's what happened. I didn't last very long. I fucked off to England. Well, a fella offered me a job. It's not like I just yeah. took a flight out there and started walking around. Yeah. fella offered me a job. Um, and he want, and to, to, he need for welding and repairs. He had a contracting business, but he also wanted me to drive a lorry for him. And I kept saying, "Oh yeah," and I wasn't going to say, "Oh yeah," but I'm Ben off the road. So, <laughs> "Oh yeah," I sure, wouldn't be such a conversation. Yeah, killer. yeah. I said, "No, I know." You know, oh geez, sure. The roads over there, I wouldn't be used to that and this and that and the other. And wrangled it around anyway. I showed up there, and because I still had a copy of my. Irish license. We were still on the pay. Well, I was still on the paper license. They'd changed over to card, but there wasn't mandatory, mandatory to yeah. change it. Also, I still had one of my paper licenses. And um, so I went over there and I'd say I did a day's welding. Literally, or two days, made a grab for a new loader that was coming. After that, I was driving every day. Um, whether it be fucking mostly mostly the loader when it came that was kind of my thing but with tractors trailers every kind of a thing diggers in the winter kind of t side of things so it was mainly for harvest they'd bring bring lads over but I used to be there a couple of months before and stay a good few months after and I did that for three years I'd say when I come home then I was doing a bit of building and stuff with you know a couple of local mm. lads so that kind of and, and still ban I, I'd say my ban was for fucking I think it was eight years in total. Did you get eight years? Well, I had a good few bands. Fuck, the judge threw the book at you. No, that, it's, bear in mind, there's only one judge in all of West Cork. That judge did a lot for me, to be fair. And he probably could have been harder on me with different things. Um, see, it all started with penalty points. Most of which, clipping along, trying to get to Castletown Bear at fucking, you know, being half an hour late in the morning. Because it's a ferry. It's a very way to get, don't forget. This isn't show up at the workshop door late. What do you do if you miss the ferry? Stay at home. You fucking have to we wait for the next one and then you have to, that ferry brings you down to the pier and it's a three mile walk up to the yard then. You'd only do that once. So you just got a ball of penalty points. In there. Yeah, well, there was other shit as well, like driving, you know, ah, there was stupid, it's like some of them fucking penalty points were having for having fancy license plates, you know what I mean? It weren't even that fucking fancy, but should you know when you're, when you're, you know, the nail that sticks out gets hammered. That's it. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, that one again, that one went to court because that one went to court. Anyway, your man tried to give me, he tried to do, it was at a checkpoint and he, he gave me, I think it's two penalty points for having a, a, a fancy license plate or an incorrect license plate or something like that. So he, he gave me two summonses, one for the front and one for the back. Oh, the bollocks. Well, the judge fucking tore him apart inside in the, in fairness, Judge McNulty, I tell you, he's no fucking fool, but he still gave me the two, the two penalty points for the one offence, so to speak, or whatever. Um, But most of it was speeding and stuff like that. Um, And then, Sure, next thing, that was it. That was it. The, ba the band, over 12 penalty points or whatever it was, band, and uh, she kept driving. And then got caught driving without a license, so to speak, or was discovered that I didn't have. That gave me, I'd say that gave me a year, something like that. It wasn't, whatever the situation was, Putting far from it every time when I get caught again, far from being up. Sure, you know everyone I mean? annoy you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. the guards must have been there after oh, fucking. This sake. fucking wanker. Oh, Keith, you fucking yeah, yeah. dickhead. Oh, I'd say they were fucking sick of me. I mean, even stupid shit. Even when we were smaller, like, you know, gang of lads, small village, like, you know, setting fire to fucking 
bushes and <laughs> doing the bollocks. And we used to steal cars a lot when we were younger. We used to steal a lot of cars now. Jesus Christ. And we used to bring them back. Just to, uh, just borrowing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You used to bring it back. You used to go driving the night and you'd put it back where you got it. No sure everyone must have known. The school's not that big. It's not that big, no. But I suppose they kind of knew. They kind of knew, but they kind of didn't. And, and and sure, we did get caught for a few different things. But we all used to field cars as well and be out ratting out in the roads and stuff. At night. We, we There was a good bit of trouble now, but we were all under the age of 18 then. So there was only so much that could happen. And, and Don Davis, the junior liaison officer, I'd say he was fucking sick shit of calling to my house. Poor bastard, yeah. Yeah, but the guards were actually very good to us when you think back. Yeah, they nowadays, really nowadays, were. nowadays you'd be just you'd be oh, gone, sure, you'd be locked up, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. does everyone, uh, do you get home well with everyone now there? Does everyone uh, go, I just, he's after pulling himself Yeah, face, there are so. a lot of them do. Sure, a lot of fellas are still saying I'm a bollocks, but they say hi to me on the road, anyway, do you know? Because I am still a bollocks. Ah, you're not. Yeah, sure. It all depends on what way you look at it. And what was the... Proudest moment and since you started your business, what was the biggest oh, leap forward? God, we haven't, you most proud we haven't fucking hit that yet. Uh, know, every, you're doing well. You're every, doing well. Every, uh, every milestone, there are milestones, like you know, and and I suppose one big one now is that the, the the shed is up and and it's it's wired. The generator is there. Do you know I the generator itself just showing up that time I bought it. I mean, I was happy enough, and the teleporter. Having That's a, a big thing. Yeah, the teleporter is a big thing. Makes some jobs oh, so easy. Oh, fucking hell. See, people don't know this. The the yard I'm in at the moment that I'm leasing, like, it's in Breed Across. Um, and the family that owns it, to be fair, they've been very good to me. And I've known them for years now, to be fair. But they're very good to me. They have their own forklift from when they were running a business. They, Kevin was making kitchens there at one time. And sure, he never charged a penny for the forklift. Sure, I use it eight hours a day every day yeah. and so I wouldn't have been able to afford to get one at the time do you know what I mean so I had the use of that then I don't know how many I'm there over two years and three years and I've had the use of that free of charge do you know what I mean so then that was another big thing she's spending all this money in the shed and then you're like jeez when I get there I don't, I don't have a teleporter I, or a forklift I mean and I don't have anything but then that teleporter came up for sale fucking very good money and I said I had to go for it to jump on it um, yeah so that was the thing and same with the generator Jesus Christ no one will ever get a deal like that again in the generator I don't think 70 hours up in the fucking thing oh. 70 yeah and she's 2008 so she was sitting in a fucking old folks home as a backup or something like that but you probably come across loads of stuff like that working in the port and going to different you'd be, places no like. you'd be surprised and a lot of people ring me there and you know they'd be looking for, or even there like there's fellas ringing now looking for tanks for storing water and things like that and they think because I'd be hauling the Bulmers tanks out and think I don't have anything to do with that I just show up and weld them to the fucking deck of the boat I have nothing to do with anything I usually don't know these things are happening I get a phone call on a Monday I said you know I'm going to be up there now uh, Wednesday morning at 7 o'clock like you know and that's the way I want it what's I'd, the most interesting Interesting job you ever went out to? Oh God, I don't really know. Um, well, I suppose what you like, you know, it's cool every time is when the windmills come in mm. and we we do the unlashing and we clear the deck of the fixing points and things like that, and they get bigger every time. Well, explain getting rid of the lashings and stuff. Like, could you have to cut? Are they all like welded? Yeah, yeah. So like, and there's fixing points welded down. There's a lashing plant for every load and every boat that's an awkward load. We'll say bulk carriers carry, um, you know, grain and st coal and stuff like that. Just, just tipped into them. But when you've awkward, random mm. fucking things, you need to set up a lashing plan, which is you have to draw out the boat and then draw the whatever's in it whatever the load is into it and then figure out what the best way to secure that is. So you'll have straps coming down, but you'll have no to. So you need to weld an eye here or a D-ring there. And then you weld C-stops, which are just basically massive plates that you weld to stop it from slipping at the bottom or anything like that. So they must be welded on. The cargo has to be loaded. All that has to be welded on and then it all has to be lashed down. Then it goes wherever it's going, but all that has to come off again. You just cut all them off? Yeah. Yeah, and clean it down to bare steel. Um, and then... Um, and do you have a certain time limit to do that? Yeah, usually, yeah, usually it's an un it's an impossible time limit every time. They're not very good at understanding. Do you know, obviously, so a ship will come out of Turkey where they had 14 or 15, you know, refugees <laughs> lashing, yeah. you know, doing the work. And then they land here in Ireland and, 
you know, you can ring all day. There's only a few of us. People always ask me that. And how do they end up ringing little old Liam O'Keefe, you know, jealous kind of hmm. people I work with, like, you know, and are in the chat. Well, how come they will never ring us? And I said, do you ever look for the job? You know, they don't, it's not, there's only a few crowds at it. You know what I How'd mean? How'd you get? Well, I've always, because of the, bo the training in the boat yard, I've always done maintenance and repairs on trawlers and boats around the place. And then you, you begin to meet people in the trade on different jobs. And, and there was a time when I never, I never went looking, looking for work, but I definitely steered myself towards certain types of work as best I could. And, um, so you get to know people in the trade and then, you know, and then someone stuck for a lad and you end up in this, you know, coming up. First time I ever went up to a cargo ship, I was absolutely terrified. I didn't know what to, what to expect. Van was fully loaded. The old van at the time, no, she was fully loaded. Like everything, chop saws, fucking welders, every fucking thing. That you thought you even might need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Showed up and your man has his van there and he doesn't even, he just barely, he doesn't even, a carpet in the back of it to stop the fish box with his <laughs> screwdriver from fucking flinging around. So all these ships, they have all their own gear on board most of the time. So you get to use their gear? As best as possible with certain, with certain jobs. When it comes to the unlashing side because we'd be doing fuel pipes uh, hull repairs every kind of a thing they come in and they need to be fixed up and they need to go so it's not always a, a load that's the job it's usually just you know a pipe burst or this or that or the other so um, they have most of their own tools anyway there's a workshop above it's Bellevue Port so it's Waterford is the most common place that I go hmm. Um, and that's because the lad that I work with, he's based there. It's as simple as that. But then again, we'd be off to Belfast and fucking Fines and all these places. And he, you can always run to the workshop if you're stuck for something. It's very handy for him. But I have in my head, like, you know, I know that I have the tool for doing this and I like to have the tool for that. But at the end of the day, sure, I mean, I, I see it with other big, big jobs and big places and you have this picture in your head and sure realistically all anyone shows up with is a welding shield and a pair of gloves and a grinder that's all you really need yeah 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 <coughs> and your brain <coughs> yeah but that's that's the key to it then really you see and it's not that I, I'm by no I'm the least intelligent person in this room anyway for a start you know I don't my mind doesn't work you can't say that my <laughs> don't underestimate how stupid I am <laughs> ever <laughs> <laughs> my my brain doesn't work as well as other people's and it does fine I have slight I see things different sometimes I think that's very um that's a very negative thing to say about yourself. But it's the truth. So I have to keep it, I have to be aware of it so that I know that you're going to have to think about this differently. Now, if you're not aware of it, then you're just ignorant. And stupid and ignorant is a fucking dangerous combination. So you need to be aware of, 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 well, you like know. everyone has to know their faults and yeah. where, they're, where they're bad and where they lack. Yeah, yeah. But you do have a lot of strengths. Which are, I, I, that's that, but the point, that's the point I'm making is that I, I need to know to, that I need to think about this differently now, or maybe sometimes I need to think about this a little more. There's another lad, he works with me, or not with me, yeah, not for me, with me, and he's just back from Australia, and he's a fucking genius, and he can do anything, in, like anything he can do, it, but he's a genius, and you, he just calculations everything off the top of his head but there's no point in me sitting there and being upset because he can do it and I can't I just have to draw it out in the ground and it takes me 10 minutes longer and that's the end of the mm. fucking day but I see there with when we're going at stuff I might see it slightly different and that's it and so so I have different ways of doing things to, to then gives me possibly at times a competitive age other times it just fucks you up rightly do you have anyone working with you? No, so the, I had Owen, um, he was a great young lad, um, when he was almost very early days when I, when I went out, oh yeah, sure, sure, we're, we're, yeah, because when I, when I went, came back from England and was doing, then I went to work in another boat yard um, for a few years. They, they, they'd asked me actually while I was still back and forth to England, but this job that was coming up was, was still to come up and never really did, but then it did, but it didn't, try, you know, it didn't happen for a long time. And, um, so they called me in there and I'd say I was there for two years and uh, I used to work by night for this other fella and he used to be, you know, should, you know, come work for me or whatever. And I put at the time a fairly big figure on what I'd have to, you know, there was a big jump in it by per hour and he agreed. And uh, so I went off with him and sure it was all f fun and games and roses for the first, I'd say I was with him for two years or more as well. But anyway, it was grand when it started to get, um, 
we I, I, I wouldn't say we ever fell out, but you know, sure, I was putting a lot of effort in. I was doing a lot of stuff there, you know, and 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 the lads, the lads that were there as well. In fairness, like you know, put a big day's work in, like, and 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 things will still go wrong. You see, but this is, this is where I had to learn fucking the hard way. At the time, I said, shut up, bollocks. He's gone away all day fucking driving around looking at the countryside, comes back and then fucks the head off me because the three of them have fuck all done. And so I can't, I'm doing what I'm doing and I can't be babysitting them and this and that and the other. Then if you flip it over to when I had lads working for me, I'd say your man was doing very well to keep his cool. Mm. To be fair. It's a, yeah, I have to see things from other points yeah, of view, you know. fucking do. No, he had a bad way of <laughs> dealing with Ben, still does. He's no staff since I left. That's the truth of it. No one will stay for more than a couple of weeks, months at a time. He's, and, 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 and maybe that's not a reflection on him. Maybe that's a reflection on the people to do, the staff you can get nowadays. That's, that's true mm-hmm. too. Do you know what I mean? Um, but but the point I'm making was I used to be saying to this fucker's making a fucking fortune off me. He couldn't have made no. I see he couldn't have made a fucking penny off me. I don't see how he ever could at those wages. Do you know? Yeah. I don't. In fairness, in fairness, and I had this notion that it was all rosy, and I go up my own, and I that money will be my money that he's making. Oh, and now you see from the oh, other side. Fuck me. Yeah. No. No. It's it's hard going, and he was right to be stressed out too. Do you know he was? Um, Wait. <clears throat> do you know the way you started your TikTok? Yeah. Yeah. So do you ever wonder why a lad that's welding down in Cork just doing a bit of grafting every day, doing a bit of giving out? Yeah. Is gathering followers. I have no idea. <clears throat> Do you not think it's just, uh, honestly, just uh, people crave a little bit of, oh, someone's just been themselves. Sure, someone's just, just been, been a, a bit honest. <laughs> uh, Gregory showed me your videos first. Yeah. And uh, I remember watching the video. I thought, oh, this is so good. It was the one where someone had dropped off a digger and hadn't oh, yeah. it off and yeah, it destroyed yeah. the yard. Yeah. And I was like looking at it and Greg was there. What a prick to do that. Who the fuck would drop off something like that <laughs> into someone's yard and then to put it up? And like, that's anyone to do that. That would be what anyone would do. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think it's just the, the honesty of your, of your videos. Yeah, yeah. But sure, that's whatever got me in trouble. Being honest. Ah, no. Honesty will never get anyone in trouble. You know, there's a, an honesty with a little bit of emotional yeah. tension, I suppose, is always, you know, you know, you can't always be honest. Yeah, no, that's true. No, it is true. Yeah. No, I sure, yeah. I Do mean, you like doing TikTok? I sure, it's, it's a, see, I, I, I've had this, this bit of a discussion with people before. So, I, I mean, you're very aware of your, where you lack and stuff. And if you do TikToks, you have to have a moment where maybe I'd be better off not doing this. Yeah. But then yeah. you go, no, fuck it, I'll do it. And see, see where it goes. See where, yeah, yeah. No, I do, I do that because I tend not to watch my own video before I send it. Yeah, I do that too. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the best way to do it. And look, if it all, if it all goes wrong, sure, they'll take it down on you anyway. They've done that a few times. And if people don't like it, sure, look. You can always come back and apologize. If you if you see something and you say, well, that was a heat of the moment thing and I said it. But I still fucking said it. So, yeah. you know, it was said. So you may as well. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry. Well, and, even you call it Angry Welder. Yeah, so that's anyone that's listening on Instagram or Spotify, right? It's the Angry Welger on TikTok. Yeah, and the the fucking um, actually a fella there, the fella just texted me and he was like, "Oh, you should call yourself because I I obviously had some rant before that name actually went on the thing. It was just I mm-hmm. don't know Liam O'Keefe or whatever was on it or user one three five six five seven five 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 one. You know, you see that shit, um." And uh, Paul Woods, PSW Services, a guy that I've done absolutely no work for, but I meet him all the time, mm. do you know what I mean? And he's, I can't make, he'll get offended now if he hears this, because he definitely doesn't sound, but I don't know if he's from Manchester, or I live up here, uh, but he's living down home and he's, oh, he's, you should call yourself the angry welder. <laughs> And I said, fuck it. I said, That's actually rings a bell. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so I said, I would anyway. I thought, yeah, yeah. I said, a bit of crack. Do you know what I mean? And um, and I didn't really think, 
I didn't think anyone it would make any difference in the long run anyway. And so, but that was that's yeah, that's what happened with the thing. I don't, and I don't know how to fellas because it's not. So that's the thing. Some people may design their day or the way they're doing a job around the ability to take a good video of it or to, to, to tutorialize it or something like that. That's not how it works. I I have a fucking job to do. Mm. That's the most important thing. Does it help you with work? Has it started getting you a little bit of work? Not really, no. No, it doesn't. I mean, it does. With the sales of the gates and things, it gives me, uh, the solar gates, it gives me a platform to sell them without having to, you know, spend ridiculous money. Well, I mean, ridiculous money and, and I, after paying for the plowing match there last week. But anyway. Um, but the, That's an expensive game. Yeah, fuck me. Yeah. Um, but anyway, well, it's not really because I was... Um, She's talking to fellas over like the likes of in Agri Technica and stuff like that. And I mean, you're talking about you're talking about tens and tens and tens of thousands, like for a fucking space. Mm. And so I'm crying about four grand there. For <laughs> Tell us about solar gates. Um, yeah, th that's the problem. So that's what'll happen. Someone will ring. I see you're selling them on solar gates. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about them. Well, it's a fucking gate on a block with a solar panel. Do you need to work on your sales pitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, there is, there is, um, there, so it's very hard to see. That's the thing. You need to be with it. You need to see it. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. hard to describe, but if you think of a, a precast con concrete block yeah. and an electric sliding gate, a cantilevered gate yeah. attached to that. And then the solar is only an option. So you can plug it into, you don't need the solar panel. Mm. But the thing is, when people... You've just done a great job of explaining it then. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot know, easier yeah, than you thought. Yeah, well, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. But the purpose of the gate, first and foremost, now you can use it for... It's so versatile. It can be used for every kind of gate application that requires a sliding gate. After that, you're kind of fucked. You know, if I was be ringing about things, you'd be like, but is it a sliding gate you need? Oh, no, 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 no. A sliding gate would never do here. Yeah, and just fucking hang up the phone. Like, what? This is what it is. But anyway, the thing about it is, Ted, it's portable. And then you get all these heroes, they're like, how do you mean it's portable? I'm like, when you lift it up with a forklift or a teleporter, you can move it. So what fucking good is a gate to you can pick up. So if you're coming down to break into my place and you're bringing a teleporter with you, I don't think it matters what gate I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're getting through any gate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I see there's a massive, there's a massive market for them in construction. So the aggregate, aggregate is what it's called. It's built in Germany. Now when it comes here to Ireland, it's got short, it's I've it's CE stamped, shoreline engineering written on it. It's all this, but it's still manufactured in Germany. I just have the deal here in Ireland and I also have the deal in the UK. How'd you get that? <sighs> the, it's a funny one now. So, when we were in Agri Technica, and I said I bumped into this gate that was on demo, mm. the gate literally fucking bumped into me. It was opening back, and I was looking at something else in the distance, and this fucking thing hit against me. And I turned around, and I said, "Holy shit!" I said, "This is this is great, an electric gate on a block." And there's one thing that I hate uh, from the engineering side of things: this fellow's asking me to make gates from. I fucking hate it. And I'm like, well, no, 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 I have an option. You know, it's either this or nothing yeah. where, apart from just flat out refusing people. And I saw it straight away and they had this aggregate and a video of it around on a big European farm where they don't, you know, cows are in all the year round mm. and fucking flat land. I said, that's no good in the farm anyway. She's like, that's a lot of harsh shit. But where it would be good and useful and practical is on building sites and stuff like that. So a construction company can own their own gate or you can hire them out or whatever and you can move them from site to site and they're there and they're brilliant for, you know, separating pedestrians from traffic, which is becoming a bigger thing. You know, like we're on about developing mm. and health and safety and this and that and the other. Well, it's all well and good some country telling you that you have to say, you know, you can't have pedestrians over here and you can't have people going out through that. Well, now there's an actual product that makes that logical or easier. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. you have a gate man there. How unsafe can it be to have a man wandering? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, you have a thing here. Now, it's not for everyone. It's not for every place, but you can also use it for private and domestic use. But it, it comes the way it is. You know, people ring and say, oh, can you make it? you know, look like this and look like that. You can make it look like whatever the fuck you want after you buy it. Yeah. That's the answer. That's that's what we have. And are you, you looking know? forward to doing plowing? 
I'm actually nervous about it because I've no accommodation booked or anything like that. I don't know what the story is with it. All I know is I paid for the fucking stand. And then I paid for the stand and then I get an email. Do you want, uh, or such as us providing fiber power broadband for the three days? 1200 euros I'm like no I'd say I'd do it out the fucking but it's gas into water I've no water I've no I, I got no I said not all the extras bring a little port potty that's all I'll say <laughs> <laughs> or a little caravan or somewhere to stay I'll have to start something out alright but I, I, I and I need to get going and I'm just so busy with everything that's what happens it's, it's just me I'm the only f- you know, there's, I don't have an office staff. She's wife. Oh, <laughs> uh, sure. I mean, she were, and she's working in, you know, she is full time at, at minding fellas worse than me. So, <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Um, <laughs> Morning and evening, you're Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. To be fair, no. How did you meet? Oh, God. How did we meet? Um, you can answer that. Huh? You can answer that. I don't know. It's, I missed her on Facebook. Just you were perving on Facebook. Pretty much, yeah. No, no, I was, I was, we were, I was, some was with the lads, and she was, she, she was packed up somewhere, and and, and she, I actually met her when I was in Foss in Waterford, actually, for the first time. Quite. She was in college in Waterford, but she was from down home or whatever. But sure, I wouldn't have known who she was. Sure, she wouldn't be seen with the like of me at all. That bollocks, no. And uh, one of the lads was in college there as well. We all went for a spin because there was fucking nothing to do there. So yeah, that's, that's, and then go forward, I don't know. I know you have to answer this because she's staring at you now, but is she the best thing that ever happened to you? Oh, sure, of course, yeah. Yeah. So you would believe that behind every good man is a great woman? Oh, there certainly is, yeah. Is she like your little conscience? She's there in the background making noise, all right, yeah. Don't feel bad about it. Mine does the very same to me. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, she's very good, but she's not businessy you now. Like, you know, uh, she's not she's not that kind of behind every man is a woman in the office making him make sure he gets mm. to this job and does that. No, no, that's that's not the way this one works. No, like, my, we, we don't either. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the, the best thing in my life, because my life is, like when you're telling me about what's going on, I feel sad. It's just... <laughs> Your head is just so afraid. <laughs> but when I do get home in the evening, it's that, that separation. Separated, yeah, yeah. You know, you go home and you're talking, you're listening to Vicky about her day and what she had to do and how the kids done this or maybe the kids done that. And then they're telling you about their stuff. And you just forget. You just, it's away from everything that's stressing you out. Yeah, yeah. And it does give you that little bit of a headspace. It, it also does. wrecks your head a little. Yeah, there's a, yeah. But it's different. Yeah, well, I that's the other problem that I have then that comes in part of, well, I don't know where the problem starts or finishes, but some. so I can't leave a job unfinished without it. Coming home with you. It's stuck there, didn't you? Mm. Yeah, and that used to be the way when I used to work for people as well. So that's why I try and stay on as late as I can, try and get something rattled out, and then you come across a problem, and then that problem will stay with you for the whole week. Sometimes it's brilliant because you spend the whole night, and by the morning you would figure out how you're going to come around it. But it's not healthy, obviously. Mm. But people say that. But so what I try and get across, so you people who do their nine to five or whatever, or their eight to fucking six, you know, whatever, they're once you know they, that's just a job to them and they go home and they're obsessed with soccer or this mm. or that or the other and the way I see it is I do my eight till six or whatever and then when I go home or not necessarily home but you know they might go to training football training after work or something mm. like that so it, for me it's all work but don't forget I'm doing a couple of different jobs in the day so it's broken up that way do you mm. know what I mean so my thing is my 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 work within reason so, uh, sailing now and, and boating and stuff is very handy for me because once I get out in the water that's actually the only time when that's I your hobby that's well that's just the only time I don't think for whatever happens I don't know what for natural phenomenon takes place uh, doesn't matter what's going on the phone then or anything like that I can just be on the have you listened to my podcast before? only only very briefly are you ready? I don't because I don't do podcasts like. are you ready? yeah yeah well. now don't think about these too much okay are these bullet or these shot are questions these are quick fire questions oh, don't think about them too, too oh. much right what's your first vivid childhood memory? Because we were talking about it earlier now, I have a picture of me sitting in a on the black and white tiles. Getting your shy hall. Yeah, yeah, road. yeah. But I've no actual... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you like yourself if you met yourself? Oh, fuck no. We'd clash. 
Yeah. Even now? Uh, well, yeah, but I, we'd still, like, I'm still a bollocks, like. And I Are you a bollocks to yourself, still? Are you hard oh, on yourself? To myself, you're, I suppose, not too bad, no, not too bad. I, uh, not that I'm aware of, yeah. Who brings you the most happiness in your life? Oh, oh sure. Just, Deirdre, like, you know, of course. No, we've We'd been have new, a different uh, answer now. She new, wasn't here staring at us. We have a new kitten, all right. No, it's a bit a of kitten. crack. Yeah, we have a kitten now is a bit of crack. But sure, she'll grow up then, but she'll be shit cracked then when she's an older cat. Like, you know? No, the cats would be grand. Be killing mice, be a fucking great job. I hate our cat. <laughs> our cat hates me. Yeah. Always trying to frighten me. I do not like our cat. <laughs> if you walked into a room with everyone you'd ever met, dead or alive, who would you go to first? Oh, fuck, I don't know. I wouldn't, I'd walk out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> do you know I believe you? I, I no, and I do. I have problems with that in crowds of people. <clears throat> anyway, go on. What's the most painful thing you've ever been told? Jesus. Uh, ever been told is different to a most painful thing you've realised is different. But ever been told... But church, I don't find that whatever you're telling me, it won't upset me. So I don't know. I don't have it like that. You know, I probably I'm an ugly, stupid bollocks or something like that. But so, I, what's the most painful thing you ever realised? Um, I suppose uh, it was to do with uh, the way I phrase it is the effects that alcohol has on parents in the home kind of thing. You realise this is this is. I give you a story. And it's a weird little one, right? Okay, we'll, we'll just stick with it. So when I was smaller, um, uh, it was Halloween or whatever, and I wanted to be like a vampire hmm. with the white face or whatever. And my mother did the makeup and stuff for me. And because she was pissed drunk as usual, she didn't really have a concept of what. So anyway, I went out with a, like a clown face or whatever, and everyone was mocking me all night. And I didn't really know why. I couldn't see my own face, by the way. Don't forget. Hmm. And I just I always remembered, like, why was why was you know a few times it's popped. Like, why was that such a difficult night or whatever? Years later, realized that it she's been drunk my whole life and a thing like that. And that's why. That's why because you couldn't fucking. Pull your shit together. I suffered for it. Now that's only a small, trivial mm. thing, but it it'll fuck with you because no, you much. build that across every different experience. It was why can't I just be fucking normal? Like why am I always the weird kid? Sure, mm. it starts at home. Do you know? Yeah, yeah. Clean shoes. You know, walking around with your fucking toes hanging out of your shoes, even though you're the richest family and. You know, it's all that stuff because you've no one there to fucking dress you. So that's that shit gets painful when you think about it. I'd say it gives you an awful lot more empathy for other people when they have issues because you're looking at them and you go, there's more to that. The, it does, it does. And I, I, oh, sorry, the most fucking painful thing for me is realizing what a bully I was. Yourself? Yeah. Should a bully become bullies? What add, made you realise it? Add my size into that then it makes me a fucking horrible person. You know, a terrifying... Imagine me now if I was fucking at you all the time and you weren't as big as me. Um, What made me realise it? I suppose I... There's a time while you're doing it that you know you're doing it, but you, you don't see the consequence. You, you're just... You're just deflecting the what you're getting from the fella at you onto the next fella. And you're also, if you see yourself in someone, the, the faults you know of yourself, you see them in someone, you pick on them to, to take them away from yourself or whatever, you know, that kind of way. It's only when you get older, and especially when you meet people who are really nice, decent fucking people years later and, you know, you're a little bit embarrassed because... You Have know, you ever said it to them? No, I haven't had any, you know, real... I mean, I've had it... See, I became best friends with, with, with my worst bully um, at a very young... You know, it developed into a, a friendship somehow, but possibly because I was busy trying to be something that I wasn't necessarily. You know, we're still good old friends, but he took a bad path. You know, he's not... You know, there's drink and there's drugs and there's that. And he had his, you know, he has his problems too, you see. That's the fucking thing. Mm. He's not a bad person. If anything, he's the most... He's the, he'd do anything for you, but he's trapped in his own fucking misery. You know what I mean? It's, a, it's like uh, Joe Rogan on his podcast says, 
uh, even Hitler was a lovely little baby once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. Know the, like yeah. Everyone starts off with that clean slate, but yeah. they're molded for yeah. some reason. Life into, fucking beats you into whatever it wants yeah. you to be. Yeah. You can fight it, all right, but you have to be given the tools. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how do you define success? Oh, fucking... Man, I'll, I'll repeat what a man said to me because it's what I, what I believe in. He says, if you can stop work tomorrow... And keep everything you have, everything you have today, everything you have, stop work tomorrow. If you can keep that, then you're obviously successful. So you can talk about that in a in a in emotional and in love and this mm. and that. But if I stopped work today, my house would be gone in two months, you know, because I wouldn't be up with the mortgage payments. Do you know what I mean? That's kind of stuff. So I yeah. think that's a really good way of 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 kind of trying to define that there now. What's the most important lesson in life that you've learned? To this day, oh God, this fucking life isn't fair. Life is not fair. No, and that's the lesson. People growing up now, and they're being taught that life is fair and should be made fair for them, and they're going to get a fucking land. Yeah, it owes you nothing. It's 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 a sad thing to watch because obviously some people can work systems so well that to, 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 it is fair for them and they'll cry when they need to cry and they'll smile when they need to you know what I mean come around it but I mean for the for the for the average for the average man or woman I mean life isn't fucking fair and don't think it is you know and don't think there's always someone out there that's there to protect you they're, they're, they're not they're not they're not it's by chance a lot of the time when you get saved you know that's chance it's not that someone was waiting to save you when was the last time that you ever felt hopeless? Oh, I don't know. I had a few kind of moments there in the last, we'll say over the winter. It's the weather, you know, it's wet, it's dark, it's mm. damp, it's shit. And you're like, I can't, like, I'm trying so fucking hard and it's not, I'm hemorrhaging money. <laughs> I'm supposed to be making money, that kind of thing. But it's not all about money, obvious. And to be fair, I suppose you could say I've never, I, in a long, long, long time, I have not felt hopeless because there's all, there's so much more there than work or, do you know, it's, it's they have a home to come home to. That was a big milestone in my, well, not business, but in life when mm. we got the house. Oh, that was cool, you know? Yeah, your, yeah. Own, your own place. Our own fucking place. Yeah, and it's a lovely house. It's fine. It gets a bit messy because I'm a dirty bastard and poor old dear to be trying to clean up after me. But, and all the light switches at the, the first <laughs> few anyway and black pom <laughs> Well, after a while, that, that used to happen in our house with me and Vicky. And now I uh, have to strip in well, the little I have, room. Yeah, so I do. I, the utility is absolutely destroyed. Yeah. The sink is all... Yeah. Yeah. I, I run from the utility room my underpants some evenings all the way down Straight to down to the shower. Yeah. Shower. Yeah, yeah. Diesel yeah. stuff out in the yard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gear oil out. <laughs> yeah, there's a good, yeah, there's a lot of stuff with gear oil at the moment. Gear oil is the worst, the isn't it? Yeah. Burnt gear oil. Oh my God. Yeah. It's so bad. Yeah. Do you believe in God? No, no, I don't know what to say about that whole thing. No, and I never was religious now. Um, you know, my mother wasn't religious or anything like that. But I do believe that someone, needs, some pe people need to believe in something. Yeah. I just believe in myself for now. Um, do you chat to your mum and dad now? I I get on a lot better with my dad now than I did then, and I I do. I'd say mom goes to, works hard at the moment. She's quite old now. She's my mother is. Do you know what age she is? She's late seventies, I'd say. She's gone. On, yeah, yeah. She's old now. She was she was fairly old when she had me, and I mm. think that was a lot to do with the complication of my birth and things like that. Mm. So she, I'd say she tries now hard enough. She, she, she doesn't drink like she would have or anything like that. Are your mom and dad proud of you? Ah, fuck it. Mom is too proud of me. She, she'd be following on TikTok now and, 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 you know, when she should, she should be ringing me. She, you can't be fucking saying that. You know, she, oh, it's so funny. She tell me. And I said, oh, it's, it's a, but anyway, mother's love for her son kind of thing. Mm. But, you know, dad, I get on well with him now. What we try and do is we keep it more on the water kind of thing. That's the way it's actually always been. We used to we do a lot of racing, sailing, racing. We did when I was younger, and that's when we got on. We'd get off the boat then, and it's fucking, do you know. Um, he's we're two completely different people. Like, yeah, you know, he actually he talks like this. You know, he's very posh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The O'Keefe's have a habit of that. You know. 
So born and raised in West Cork and somehow... Would, would you... Uh, do you ever get the fact that because you had a troubled childhood and because it could have went either way for you and the amount of young lads that say are struggling and that are in the position you would have been when they were younger, that you're kind of an important person to, so, to show that, yeah, I can get here. Yeah. I can pull myself out of this. Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to, and I wouldn't say to, 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 to that I am the... The, the, no, not, not the, saying that you, no one ever wants I, to be that role model. Yeah, but, but I, I would be more. Lads than, do need it. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to 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 share my wisdom experience. That's another thing as well to change with me. I well, no, see, it's honestly, it's the same. Take take it on the TikTok side of things, right? It's a good way of explaining it. I can reply to anyone with anything, you know, and the you know, you get these stupid mm-hmm. bastards and the the keyboard warriors. But it's easy for me. I'm six foot fucking three or whatever. I'm 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 I. Not only am I, you get big and, and awkward, but I'm big and I, I'm work, I'm physically working every mm. day. And I, I also am, I'm quite aware that I'm well able to beat the shit out of a fella. I was, got really good at that at one time, do you know what I mean? I can look after myself and it's not a thing to be proud of. The point I'm making is, it's easy for me to say whatever I want and say, lads, if you're having problems, just speak about it yeah. or whatever, because no one, you know, no one face to face is actually going to say much to me, do you know what I mean? But you have people there and they're hiding in their, in, you know, and they, they're scared of what people think and what people say and I still get, I do suffer from anxiety as much as anyone else don't get me wrong especially when it comes to crowd I'm actually terrified that's why I don't, won't go to the pub I'm terrified of crowds of people mm. and the only way to combat that then I have to overcompensate by being the bollocks do you know what I mean that was a lot of what was going on with drink as well so there's, there's a whole deep There's a, you could go picking into a lot of that stuff but for for lads that are that are you know not having a great time, it gets better. But you have to make it better for yourself. You're the only person that can do it. I'm sick of saying that. And it's like whether you're trying to get a job done, or whether you're trying to fix your own mental health, or whether you're trying to come overcome a physical injury or anything like that. The only person at the end of the day that can do it is you. And it's as simple. So as if that. you're 18 year old Liam O'Keefe and you're listening to this podcast. What would you say to him? See, it takes, it, that's the thing though. It's, it's, I've, I've often just sat down and thought about it. How would you, in terms of, cause I'd say, how would I deal with my kids now if they, we end up with that kind of stuff? And it's, you can't talk, you can't talk to angry. You can't talk to stubborn. You can't talk to stupid. You, you can use words, but it's not going to go in. So you need to, the, I don't know, 18 year old me, I mean, all I really wanted was was to be was you know the job fucking driving a digger doing something manly and I didn't have that I didn't have access to that in the family do you know what I mean so eighteen year old me needed work I wasn't interested in football or anything sports or anything like that so but I also wanted friends I wanted to be liked I wanted to be cool do you know what I mean I had to keep up this fucking facade mm. and and it's very hard to give an answer as to how you settle that down or whatever. Do you know what I mean? There's there's a fine line because you can still have the crack. You can still do the bollocks. I still do sh- things with the lads there to, you know, you'd, or say stuff that you shouldn't, you know, doing the bollocks, do you know what I mean? To, but like, you know, there, there is a limit then, do you know what I mean? And, and, and you need to come back out of it. But... I don't know. Things are very different nowadays, though, for young fellas with with cars and things like that. It's all changed so much. I don't know. I think uh, with social media and everything, That's, people don't have a second chance anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you yeah. can be demonized for life. It's true. For it's just true. making mistakes that we all made. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we. I mean, I don't care who. You know, at the time, I even knew it when I was younger. So you were dealing with fellas that 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 also were bollockses when they were young, and they were trying to. Do you know what I mean? But mm. it is. It's different now, and it, it's actually very dangerous now. For you know, people people from all over the world can say what they want to you, and and if you're not ready for it, well, that's another side of a thing. Because if, if you're not if you're not ready for it, just stay the fuck away from it, kind of thing. Mm. And that's easy. To, so I had this this actually a couple of years ago. Um, there's a, we were living with a couple of friends and, and one of their, our friends is, um, she's a teacher as well. It's primary school teacher. And I was saying, um, I was saying, Jesus, kids now on their fucking iPhones and they're fucking six, seven, eight years of age, like, and have access to these things. I said, not a fucking chance, but, and Clara now, and she's a teacher and she's very, very 
screwed together, like very screwed together. And she said, so you're going to subject your child to being the only one that doesn't have the phone. And I thought to myself, fuck. Then you're putting him in the, or him or mm. her in a, it's very hard nowadays. Hey, uh, I, my, my 12 year old, like three years without a phone when everyone else in the class had. And I was feeling shit. Yeah. Like I was the one just feeling so bad. And she has one since Christmas. And you can see that it's, it's hard manage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know. I honestly got it. It's a thing that, that, that I, I'm going to find very difficult. And I do, I already find, I can, there's a, and I don't get bothered, but I, sometimes I get a good, bit of crack looking at the comments and I do enjoy reacting and I suppose that's a little bit of the the bully in me or something letting back out but but if you but one thing when it came to fighting or anything like that I never fucking started a fight in my life but if you give me a reason I I will fucking you know I'll make you feel stupid for trying to make me look stupid. That's the kind of way. Unless to... you meet Habib fucking <laughs> <laughs> some night. I know. He fucking ex- folds your clothes while you're still in him. Exactly, yeah. No, there's there's that side of it. But at the same time, if you're going to try and make a fool out of me, I'm certainly going to try and make a fool back out of you. So, um, and I mean, and that's not a great way to outlook on life. You know, if someone's trying to make a fool out of you, maybe the best thing to do is just walk away from and let them be a fool. Do you know? But anyway, um, that's what happens. But, you'll notice that like some of these people they can't really spell or they can't comp- and then you wonder what age is this is this is this is this could there's, be a child there's a lot you know? that's why there's no point in even looking yeah there's yeah. no point in even wasting a second on it, it is true it's either a child or it's some really down and out person yeah yeah because if you're if people look if you're a you'll never see an NBA player or a top level athlete saying someone shit yeah. At sport. You'll never see a, a millionaire saying someone shit for starting a business. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't happen. Yeah, it's true. You know, yeah. it, negativity only comes from people that are lacking yes, in their yeah, life. Yeah. You know, it's just, it just doesn't work like that. So you yeah. can't give it any mass because it's irrelevant to you. Yeah, that's the truth of it. Yeah. Because no one would ever do anything if that's the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd all be shit. <laughs> but thanks a million for coming up. I know yeah. it's a long way up for you. I actually didn't think I'd get you till nearly Christmas. Because yeah, you're yeah. so far down. So we might come back again. Do. I do Patreons and you can come on and talk shy about, give out about whoever you want. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I do try and get people on that are just, I, I think we are sorely lacking in media. Just the normal everyday people. Yeah. The people that have to have real struggles. Because life's not fucking easy. No, it's not. And it's, 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 it's this, I call it the Instagram lifestyle, mm. right? So Miriam and Joseph, and they have this fucking picture now and they're off on holidays and mm. big smiles and white teeth and this and that and the other yeah. and fucking great. And they probably went to the credit union to be able to afford the fucking I, I'm, thing. I'm blue in the face. Yeah. trying to People to look at me and they think, now, hey, I call myself making big back, right? <laughs> but I did it out of irony. Yeah, and like yeah, people think that I like I bury everything that I have into this. Yeah, yeah. bury everything. Like I take seven hundred and fifty euro a week. We're always buried in debt. Yeah, I could be going home and I could have oh Jesus, I'm always buried in debt. Yeah, but like you, I'm hoping that at the end of it all, I actually have You'll something. You have something there, yeah. You yeah. know, and like I'm trying to, I'm in the middle of. Like you, you do social media. Someone from the outside looking in, oh, look, it's someone doing social media and not realizing that you are working every day. You're up yeah. doing so this. There's, there's, that's another side because you swear out the camera following me yeah. all day. And so people don't half understand mm. what I do in a day or what I have to get done in a day or even a week or in a month. Mm. And this notion, like there's obviously shit. You don't see me running around the, the cargo ships or stuff with any, and I'm not going to show you Stuff that might affect my day's work. Yeah. The idea again, get back to the same thing. Some people will develop their day around their showing Videos. their social yeah. media. By chance, I see something and I see an opportunity where I say, "Look, we'll have a quick video of this mm. now, and we'll we'll move on from it." Like, but you know that kind of way. But it's, but again, that that adds to like I, I'm not trying to deceive anyone or anything. I'm just not showing mm. every fucking thing. But like, so so how easy it would be for me to show you exactly what I wanted you to think again same as it and and them two who got the the 
to five grand credit union loan to go on this holiday for a week probably weren't talking for four days of that week, probably you know yeah. so I mean life isn't it's not easy and and, it, and the, the less people I'm not saying you don't have it's fine it's nice to make things look nice you know and sometimes you know you but you things aren't great and you'll just you just say ah she look we're, we're getting on great it gives everyone a, a false sense of security on yeah. their own life you know, yeah. because everyone thinks oh why is my that's life so the shit? level we need to yeah yeah, yeah why yeah. are they able to do yeah, this and yeah. I'm not able to do yeah. it and, and they're not doing it I can no. fucking well assure you they're not doing it you know well, and, there's some people probably doing it you know a fair play to them but Jesus, uh, I'd say very. Few, and, uh, I, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I, if, if I could give Liam, his, you have your dream life next year. You have your dream life. What's your day? I don't even know. You don't even know. You, 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 it's like what you be careful what you fucking wish for. Aren't things going fine the way they are now? I know. I, I'd have um, goals. You know, like like I would know what my dream life would be, and I work every day for it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like it's like we, we. I don't want to drink pina coladas on the beach yeah. every day, yeah. no. But I would love to do my day's work. I love driving the machines. I'd love to do it for just eight hours. A day. Yeah, yeah. No, there's you that. Know, yeah, yeah. I'd love to yeah. come home and Absolutely. have dinner with my kids, be able to go to training, and just put them to bed every night. Absolutely. Like if I could have that and not be worrying about, because there's so many people. I guarantee you, I'd say seventy percent of the population go to bed every night, and be, instead of sleeping and relaxing, we're thinking. Right, will that be there for that? And will it be mm. okay for this? Oh, I haven't this job done. I need to send this email. Or I'm not spending enough time with kids. You have this guilt. Yeah. Like I always have this guilt. It's like, am I am I rearing these right? Am I am I doing the right thing? Instead of me working all the time, trying to build a life that I don't know if we need, <laughs> should I be spending more time with him? It's a it's a weird balance. It is, it is, it is. But you're like uh... <coughs> go jump to role models then right and say your kid's grown up then and and because you are it's not like you're gone all the no. fucking time and you do spend your time with them and you do what you can with them and you have a, a home life right mm. so that's that's much better than most people have already that's just a fact but so, you sacrifice your own life for that yeah but 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 the work you're doing you as long as you enjoy your work what you do right mm. so it's not it's not the worst day you could be having you're, mm. you're at work you know Kids are at home, but they see, which not every child gets to see at the moment with, you know, fucking social fucking housing and, and, and it, you know, I'm not saying everyone's taking a handout or whatever, but they don't see dad gets up in the morning, dad goes to work and dad comes home happy to see us, right? Yeah. So, and what actually happens is dad gets up in the morning, mom gets up in the morning to get me ready for school and they sit there because they have fuck all to do for the day. Maybe yeah. they go drinking, maybe they don't, you know what I mean? And then I come home and they're all just so, f you know, there's no drive, no yeah. drive. And that's what we're lacking is the drive because everyone's fucking handed everything, mm. do you know? Um, I do tell Vicky that's why I don't get to snip. <laughs> it'll neuter me I won't have any drive <laughs> I'll just give up my job I'll look for a social you'll house have, in town and I'll no say I'm just going to spend time with you Vicky yeah yeah, yeah 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 well, uh, thanks million for coming grand yeah yeah thanks and, for having uh, me if you want to see you can just follow him follow the links underneath yeah. and um, yeah thanks for million <laughs> grand, appreciate no it Deirdre thanks for coming <laughs> I offered her a mic by the way yeah, no, I'll Deirdre, have a lot of women message Deirdre me saying is, you wouldn't even give her a mic yeah no dear just says out of it <laughs> right yeah. thanks a million perfect Go right, see you bye bye, bye.